hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about Gregor Mendel's experiment. What we're actually going to do in this video is we're going to describe his results and explain his results. The actual dot point says describe outcomes of monohybrid crossing involving simple dominance using Mendel's exp explanations. This one part, the major part, is we have to describe the results of monohybrid crossing, which is what we did last ex for the experiment itself. But then we have to use Mendel's explanation to come up with those results. And we go over the actual Mendel's explanations first. This was Mendel's first law of dominance. And this is his explanation. So there's two parts. We're going to have to cover this dominance part and segregation. I'll cover the segregation part first. And this part of this law says that every parent has two factors that code for a trait. And with factors, nowadays we just refer to them as genes. So for every trait, there are two genes that code for it. So for example, here we've got capital G, which stands for green, and small g stands for yellow. But as you can see, there's two Gs. This is a pure bread. It has two big Gs, but there's not just one gene. This is a gene. There's not just one coding it, but two genes coding for this plant to be green. Whereas the other case, we've got two small Gs, and this co is coding for a, a yellow plant. Now, this is the purebreds, and if it were a hybrid, a monohybrid, it would look like this. It would have one big G and one small G. This is a monohybrid. So it's a mixture of the two. Now, in the other parts, this was the, the first part, segregation, just means that there are two factors that code for a trait, so that they have two of these genes determine the trait. And then the other part is that, for the dominance part, is that one trait is dominant over the other. So, for example, here, because they have the same one, it doesn't matter, but actually the big G, so capital letter usually stands for dominance, so in this case, the big G is the dominant one, but because there's two big G's, it doesn't matter, and the actual plant will be green. Big capital G stands for green. Whereas in the other case, again, there's two of them, so it doesn't matter, but these are actually both recessive. Because they're both recessive, it doesn't matter, so this plant will be yellow. But here, this is where the dominance is important. Capital, big G, is dominant over small g, which is recessive. So here we've got our dominant and recessive. Now this is important because the actual plan will be green. We said the F1 generation was all green. Even though it has this small g in it, the big g is dominant, so all of them will be green, not yellow. Now this is what we need to know to be able to go through the actual procedure, which we'll do now. But this experiment, he obviously looked at different variations. And we looked at, we will look at yellow and the green seeds, that part of the experiment. But he also looked at long, and short stems, and we're also going to go over that cross as well. So we're going to go for two of his experiments, but he did quite a few more as well. So first, what we do, we have our phenotype and genotype. These are our names you should become familiar with. Phenotype means, just means the appearance. So for example, these ones are green. So the phenotype is green. This one, the phenotype is yellow. Now the genotype is what actual genes are inside the actual Plant. So in this case, this plant has genes, two capital G's, which means that it has the green gene, and the dominant version, whereas this, this one has two small G's, that means it's actually yellow. So small G stands for yellow, and that's this phenotype, uh, genotype. So genotype is the actual genes inside, whereas the phenotype is just what it looks like. Now we're going to cross two of the P's. So the parent generation, we're going to cross to one green with one yellow, and we're going to see what comes out, the actual result. This is what we did last experiment now, but now we're going to go over in terms of phenotype and genotype. So because with the actual rule as well, segregation, the rule of segregation we went over, means that only one genotype will pass. So you will only have one genotype from both the parents cross, not both the genotypes from both the parents, only one from each, will become a new plant. So for example, we're going to have this G here from this plant and this G here from this plant. And that produces one capital G 
and the small g we grab from this side. Then we could also have this g here, so the first g, but the second g from the other one. So big G from the first and, a, and small G from the second. And it will still be the same kind of plant. And we could do that for every single plant. Now, again, we've got the second G here. And we're just going over all different possibilities. And you can see we've got the same again. We've got the big G here and a small G from the other one. And for the last one, we would have that same procedure again. Big G for the second one and then second G here. We're just going for all different possibilities. But you can see they're all the same. So they're all this monohybrid. The monohybrid, their genotype is capital and small g, but their phenotype, what they look like, because this one is dominant, they would all look like they would all be green. So all of these are green, even though they have this yellow genotype in it, but it's recessive, it's hidden. But what happens now if we cross two of these? So if we were to cross this one here with this one here, so these two, what would happen? We would have you could grab this G here and have this G from the second one. So it would be two capital G's. That would be obviously still green. We would grab maybe the second G here. Also, we could still go for the first G here and go for the small G here. So now we have one capital G and one small G. Still be green. We could grab now the second small G and mix it with that second big G. And now we would have this. And remember, capital is always big G, is always dominant over small G. And last but not least, we can grab the other one, it's the last one, which was small G and small G from the second one. So now we have two small Gs. And what that would mean is this one is actually yellow. And all the other ones were all green because they're all dominant. So even though this one is a purebred, pure, the other ones are monohybrid, but they're all still green because the G is dominant over the small G. But if we can also use one of these ones here, we call it the Punnett square. And that's a very simple way of doing it. It's a very fast way of doing it. So you can imagine you would just grab, so this is the same here. We have our F1 generation. This is our F1 generation. We had one capital G and one small G. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to put them in this Punnett square instead. So this G is there and this G is there. Now we crossed only the same ones. So we have the same procedure here. This would have come from maybe this here. And this would have come from this here. And we can do it really quickly of what we just did now without having to go through all that painful procedure. We could just see, okay, if we grab this G from this one and this G from this one, we'd have two big Gs. If we grab this G from this plant, mix it with this G from this other plant, we have a big G and a small G. If we grab this one from this plant and the big G from the top plant, we would still have that capital G and small G. And now if we have the small G from the first plant and a small G from the second plant, we would have that GG. And that ratio, as I mentioned, we have one yellow, but we have three green. And that ratio is the three one, which we mentioned earlier. And the reason why is because that small G was recessive. It wasn't shown in the F1 generation, but then reappeared in the F2 generation. And we can use either this kind of method or the Punnett square, which is a lot faster. And I'll show it again for the same procedure, but with a different kind of cross. So here we have TT, big T and small T. Now the big T, this stands for tall, the tall plant. And the small T stands for a small plant. So we use the same letter, just capital for for the dominant and small for the recessive. So tall, because it's capital, it must be the dominant. And it's dominant over small, which has a small t, which is a recessive one. So this is the one that's hidden if we have a dominant one. We could use that same method again, or we could just use a Punnett square. And I'll just use a quick Punnett square to show you that it goes a bit faster. So we have, again, we, what we do first, we would just first get to F1 generation. One could go here, one could go here. And as we mentioned earlier, the F1 generation will all look the same. It'll be big T and small t, all of them. But now instead of doing that whole procedure with F2, what we can do is we can just use that Punnett square. So we said the F1 generation were all capital T and small t. 
So capital T and small t for all of the F1 generation. But now we're trying to figure out what would the F2 generation look like. So this was to get the F2 generation. So we said um, we can look at, okay, we can put that capital T for the first plant here, small t here, second plant capital T here, small t here, and then just figure out what the actual ratio will be. So these two will come together and it produce two t's, two capital t's. Then this one will come together one small t from this plant and a large t from this plant. For here we have a large t from the second plant but a small t from the first plant, from this one here. And then two small t's, one from here and one from here for the other one. So same with the green peas, we have a ratio of three to one. So for every one small one, we have three large ones in the F2 generation. That was for the F2 generation. So the genotype was the actual genes that were making up these traits. The phenotype was the appearance. So in this case, we have one dominant, pure dominant. This was a purebred, pure. We have the genotype is two, two Ts. The appearance is tall. Here we have a monohybrid. So it's a mixture. Its genotype is capital T, small t, but its appearance will be tall because this one's dominant. Same as here. This would also be a monohybrid, but its appearance would be tall. Whereas this one would be a recessive, so it has two recessive ones. So its appearance would be small, and its genotype would be two small genes. Right? So hopefully that was useful. But for this is actually, so the idea was just to use this explanation of Mendel's laws, which I mentioned earlier, the idea that you know you have segregation so that only one gene of every parent passes on to the next generation. But then you also have the dominance idea, so that if you have one dominant over the other, the dominant will show, and the non-dominant won't be lost, but it will be hidden. And it could come out again if we cross the F1 generation with the F2 generation, which we did, and we can see that three to one ratio at the end. But it's a pure ratio for F1, they're all the same. F2 generation will be 3 to 1. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.